Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're going to take a look at AP Chemistry Unit 9, Section 8, which is all about the thermodynamic favorability of electrochemical cells. Now in the last couple of videos, we've been learning about how to calculate E cell, the potential difference for a galvanic cell. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate or determine the thermodynamic favorability of those cells. Now here's the equation that we're going to use for that. Delta G equals negative N F E. As we've already learned here in Unit 9, we know that delta G is the quantitative measurement of how thermodynamically favored a process is. If it's thermodynamically favored, that delta G is going to have to be a negative number. If for some reason it's not thermodynamically favored, delta G will be a positive number. Now the N this is the number of electrons that are transferred. You might remember that whenever we wrote these uh, balanced equations in the last couple of videos, we had to flip around one of those uh, half reactions and add the two half reactions together. And however many electrons disappeared or were canceled out on the left side and the right side, that's the number that's going to go in there for N. Your most common numbers will be 1, 2, and 6 in these equations. Uh, it could be something different, but those are your most likely uh, numbers that could go in there for n. Now f is a constant. This is called Faraday's constant, and we're going to use that in several of the next uh, couple of, of lessons here. Faraday's constant is equal to 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. Now this is a number that's given to you on the AP exam. Uh, and so it'll be given to you, but it is, it is nice to know that. Now E, of course, refers to the E cell. That's the potential difference or the voltage of the electrochemical cell. Now just as a reminder, you might remember that almost all of our E cell values have been positive. And that's the case for a galvanic cell. All of the electrochemical cells that we've worked with so far in this unit, in these videos, have been galvanic cells. And just by convention, that E cell, that potential difference, has to be positive. And if that's the case, the process is thermodynamically favored. Now, there are some electrochemical cells that could have a negative value for E cell. If that's the case, the process is not thermodynamically favored. Now that doesn't mean that the process could never take place. In fact, there is a special type of electrochemical cell that is specifically for that. And that's what we call an electrolytic cell. Or in other words, it's a process of electrolysis where we have to connect an external power source in order to make the reaction proceed. So we are going to take a look at that in a couple of videos here coming up. So let's go ahead and take a look at this example problem. It says a galvanic cell is connected using nickel and aluminum metals at standard conditions. Let's calculate the overall E cell, the cell potential, and delta G for this galvanic cell. So once again, just like we did in the last video, we have to subtract these two values in the two possible configurations. And so let's do this one and then we'll do the other direction. And the question that we have to ask ourselves, since this is a galvanic cell, E cell has to be positive. So which of those two uh, combinations is going to give us the positive value? Well, it's this one over here, isn't it? That one gives us a negative value, so that's not going to work. So whenever you look at this, if the question asks us to go one step further and say which one is the cathode and which one is the anode, we know that the cathode is always in the first position. So that would be nickel is our cathode here, and then the anode would be in the second position. So that's aluminum. So the E cell is just whatever you compute this to be. So that's positive 1.41 volts. And now we're going to go ahead and calculate delta G for this process using that equation right there. So we're solving for delta G. Do you see what the N is going to be here? Whenever you uh, flip around that aluminum half reaction and add these together, what would the number of electrons have to be in order for this to work? Well, I think you've done enough of these now to realize that 2 and 3 won't add up. You have to get a total of 6. Right, so our N on this one is going to be 6. F 
Faraday's constant is that 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. And our E is our voltage that we just calculated, 1.41 volts. I'm going to write this in here, uh, 1.41 joules per coulomb. Just so you know, one volt is equal to one joule per coulomb. I'm doing that so you can see how the units work out here. So we know that the coulombs would cancel and the electrons would cancel as well. So the units, whenever you multiply these numbers together, are going to be joules per mole. So that would be negative 816,000 joules per mole. Now we normally write these in kilojoules per mole. So that's negative 816 kilojoules per mole. So once again, is this a thermodynamically favored process? Well, it most certainly is, as you can see. Hope you've learned something about E cell and delta G and how they are related to each other. Uh, if you learned something, please slam that like button. I hope to see you in the next video where we're going to move right on and talk about what happens when we're not at standard conditions. Hope to see you then.